Hey everyone, a while ago we bought a few of the receivers for ever-growing fleet of cars and interestingly one of the receivers uh, did not work. We couldn't bind it to our transmitter. Now, the behavior was quite weird because the LED seemed to blink uh, usually as it should and uh, there was a signal in the output, it just didn't want to bind. So I played around a little bit with it and uh, I had a programmer that could read the uh, e square prompt chip here where I suspected that there may be the unique code uh, used for binding inside. And I took a receiver that was uh, bound already to the transmitter, uh, read the code out from the chip, put it in this uh, re uh, receiver here and it worked fine. So I thought, you know, strange, uh, uh, did not really analyze what the problem could be and was happy that it worked. So I. Uh, used it in a car until we uh, started to drive around and found out that we had extremely limited range. Uh, basically 10 meters away the car stopped responding and uh, the receiver did not receive a signal. So it became uh, pretty clear that uh, there must be some issue in the antenna path because it also explains why I couldn't bind uh, the receiver. Uh, this particular receiver requires that you bring the transmitter very, very close. Actually, you almost have to touch the antenna physically before it uh, will even bind when you push the bind button. And since uh, obviously there is a problem with the uh, incoming signal, the in incoming signal is too weak uh, for whatever reason that we have not yet identified, uh, the binding procedure fails even though the re receiver is actually working fine in terms of uh, behavior, just that the antenna doesn't work. So let's have a look at uh, what we can uh, analyze and um, whether we can find a problem. Uh, the modern uh, 2.4 gigahertz receiver, uh, they are all uh, very very similar in design. Uh, here we have an RF chip. Uh, this particular one is from Nordic Semiconductor. It's uh, widely used in a variety of applications uh, like RF remote controls and all kind of uh, stuff. Uh, it has quite a good reputation. It's a low cost chip but uh, works very well. Uh, this one also has a built in uh, microcontroller. So on this particular board there is only a single uh, chip that does the RF as well as uh, all the logic and the software. Uh, we have here as I said earlier a small uh, I2C C square prom. I2C is a bus that only has a data and a clock line uh, and uh, E-Squareprom means that it's a storage that holds its, uh, the data even when you power it off. There are a couple of LEDs in here, a green one and a red one, uh, the bind button, all the uh, outputs, so one battery port and the channel 1, 2 and 3. Uh, over here we have the power supply, there is a uh, low voltage regulator that takes the 5 to 6 volt from the BEC and convert it into the 3.3 volt that, that all the chips nowadays need with a big uh, coupling capacitor. There seems to be another voltage regulator in here. Um, not sure exactly what it's for. And then if we look at here, we have the antenna coming in and here is the path where all the RF filtering takes place uh, and goes uh, into the chip. So since we're suspecting uh, a problem in the antenna path, so from, from over here, down to the chip. Uh, let's have a closer look uh, with a microscope and see if we can see if anything. So I set up my USB microscope and uh, zoomed into the part of the circuit board uh, where the uh, incoming antenna path is. So you can see uh, clearly see the antenna. It goes into uh, some sort of filtering. Uh, disclaimer, I don't really understand much about RF electronics, so I'm not quite sure exactly what all the stuff is, but uh, basically I'm more or less guessing. But there's some filtering. There seems to be some amplifier. This is clearly an active device where there is power here, ground here, a lot of this coupling and an input and an output. You can actually see there's quite a big trace from the antenna path through the whole circuit. After the amplifier, there's yet another filter. And then it goes here into uh, uh, some uh, passive components, uh, most likely resistors, uh, capacitors and inductors, and goes into the chip uh, over here. 
So you can really see there is a kind of a big trace that seems to be the antenna signal. And when we look closely here, there seems to be something missing, as well as over here. So that's uh, certainly an interesting uh, finding, especially the, the, uh, this uh, component here. Uh, this component over there, there seems to actually be in, in parallel, so uh, it's not clear what it is. So let's have a look at the data sheet. Okay, so I looked on the internet and uh, found the schematics using my favorite search engine. And if we look here at the uh, area where the antenna comes in, you can see that uh, there is uh, some input circuits uh, input circuitry comprised of um, inductors and capacitors, and we can certainly match that uh, to the components that we find on the board. Now there is no uh, filtering, there is no amplification like we saw on a receiver. But uh, that doesn't matter because uh, the component is missing is uh, very, very close to the chip. And uh, that circuit is in the reference diagram as well. So if we look here, uh, we see that there are uh, two capacitors to ground. And one of them is NA, which means not available, which means it shouldn't be stuffed. So that explains why one of the position is uh, uh, empty. Uh, then we have uh, three inductors of uh, 6.8 and 4.7 nanofarad and uh, capacitors on the input side. So let's zoom into the uh, PCB with the microscope even more and uh, see if we can find out uh, which of the components uh, is actually missing. All right, we are zoomed in and we have here our chip. Here is the component that is missing, and here is another empty slot. Now remember there were one capacitor in parallel with another one, uh, which was uh, one of the capacitors said uh, is not available. And if you look carefully, you can see that those uh, components are in parallel, and they have here on the edge uh, via, most likely towards ground. So it's very, very likely that this is the component uh, that uh, is not needed in this diagram. It's very interesting that they still put it on the board, but uh, yeah, that's what happens sometimes. Uh, and then we can see here one, two, and three components where these uh, three inductors were. There is one across the pins, one was towards the voltage where the capacitors are, and the other one was towards the antenna, and that inductor seems to be missing. Uh, here is uh, some uh, two, two capacitors. Now I assume they are capacitors because uh, from the components themselves you cannot actually see that, simply because of the coloring and uh, uh, how they are aligned. Uh, those four components are white, uh, this one is brown, this one is a darker brown, so they seem to be capacitors here and the inductors here. But just to make sure, I will actually off camera take a multimeter and uh, verify that indeed the white components are inductors, which means they should have uh, a very very low resistance. If I measure it with the ohm meter, and that uh, this one over here actually the uh, capacitor, the input capacitor, and it should have a very very high impedance. So if you look carefully, you can also see that uh, apparently there was already a chip on there, and it's just somehow uh, came off. Maybe during testing, maybe during transport. It's just very unclear. And the uh, chip in question is indeed an inductor. And uh, it's a 4.7 nanofarad, uh, sorry, a nano Henry. Now that's a very, very tiny value, and that's only really common in the RF domain. Uh, you can still get them uh, easily online. Uh, actually, I was lucky enough to get a few samples uh, from the office from, uh, from some of my colleagues, which happened to have them in the drawer. Uh, they are just a cent item, so they're not really expensive, but uh, yeah, if you need them, you have to buy them, most likely maybe 50 pieces or 100 pieces, but still, it's, it's really just a, a few cents uh, per chip, uh, so even if you have to buy them from Element 14 or RS Components or DigiKey, uh, that's not an issue. So let me get the soldering iron out uh, and put that, uh, that inductor on. Uh, these components are 0402 size. Uh, which means they are less than 
one millimeter on their longest side so they're really really tiny and uh, they're not exactly uh, fun to solder they're actually already very annoying uh, in terms of hand soldering they are clearly designed for machine stuff uh, let me see if I can uh, solder on, on camera uh, if not uh, then I will let you know Okay, that wasn't uh, the easiest solid job I've ever done on the country. It was very difficult because uh, there is no space. I had the camera and the microscope in front of me and all that together didn't help really. But uh, I think I succeeded and uh, got the inductor on. Now we will have to test it. So let's see, I put on a servo, a micro servo. I have a PEC, uh, it's uh, still working, the green LED is on, uh, it's as bound as before, this servo is working, but the trick is uh, will it bind to, an, uh, to the vehicle, and yes it does, let's change the vehicle on the receiver, okay, Front vehicle, the red light is on, and it's green light, and that's a success. So it looks like uh, we have fixed the problem. Uh, the missing inductor was the issue. Of course, before I uh, seriously use this uh, receiver now, I will do an extensive range test uh, of a second person to ensure that this uh, is the only problem that this particular receiver had. But uh, it looks very promising, uh, it was about half an hour uh, work, which is not really much. And uh, the cost of the inductor is something like uh, two cents, so certainly worth it uh, to try. I hope you like it, I hope you learned something. Uh, it's not really hard to diagnose and repair these kind of things. So next time, uh, before you throw stuff away, uh, give it a go. It's uh, very satisfying to get uh, things working. Thank you.